Episode 7, Warden Sentry Armour and Colonial Flag List. Hello! It has been quite a while since I put together the first series of videos. I hope everyone playing the game is doing well, and I'm very eager to get straight into it with the two new sets of uniforms we've been given in this coming update. Today we shall be focusing on what I call the Shock Trooper Raider sets for both of the factions. The Warder Gun and Breastplate and the Colonial Velian Flak Vest, and a brief history lesson behind the real-life influences of both these sets. In warfare, body armor never entirely vanished as the technology and combat tactics advanced, changing from being the basic normal protection for infantry into more specialized roles. The heavy body covering of plate and mail eventually reduced to just torso pieces and helmets that provide protection for cavalry in combat, or siege engineers working on trenchments or with explosives in the centuries that followed, returning to a more modern form during the 20th century. Both the Central Powers and Triple Entente experimented in bringing back some form of protection for their fighting forces during the Great War from debris and shrapnel, the more common example being the steel shrapnel helmets that would be rapidly adopted by all fighting armies after 1916. Prior to this, crude mail, even older pieces used for sapping, were adapted or mocked up and used by trench raiders for minor protection on an individual basis for both sides on European fronts of the war. Experimenting with head covering for the soldiers, but also the possibility of greater protection of the whole body, these nations on either side were come up with some very interesting ideas. These trials would result in the production of the Sappenpanzer plate torso armour system for Imperial Germany, or the Farina Sapper armour of the Kingdom of Italy, which were both used in limited but functional numbers. Soldiers wearing these sets would be usually weighted down and be limited in movement and were usually regulated to less mobile, heavy frontline duties such as engineering and demolitions under fire or operating a machine gun with the crew. These plates would only provide protection from low velocity pistol rounds and gunfire from extreme ranges as well as shrapnel and debris. Such sets would still see limited use up until the end of the Great War. The concept was later revisited during the Second World War by the Allies and the Soviets with the creation and usage of smaller designs for mobility and function in mind as well as protection. These examples would continue to improve and evolve into the modern composite material plate carrier harnesses of the Cold War and beyond worn by soldiers today in combat. Warden Gunner Breastplate The helmet itself seems to be a more crude and modified version of the default Warden Shrapnel helmet, perhaps an older pre-industrial era helmet worn by the Warden Cavalry or Footmen of the past. The crude metal visor being partly a reference to both the Salé helmet and the Imperial German Army's Star Helm Stern Panzer plate attachment. As we move down towards the torso area, the neck of the Walden model appears to be wearing a bunched up silk scarf to prevent shaping and also to brace against the plating as improvised padding while on the move. This is all secured and held on by some sort of belt strap harness system and the weight of the plates themselves. The shape and appearance of the main torso armour clearly resembles the German Imperial Army's own Sappen Panzer set on display here in this museum. This extra level of protection, while making it harder to kill, especially with melee weapons, has also made the Warden Soldier heavier and slower in movement as reflected by the game's mechanical stat system. Attached to a single upper arm is a crude plating spalder held on by a separate belt strap system. No comical oversized video game pauldrons in sight, which thankfully will give this Warden Soldier no difficulty in, in accessing the rifle ammunition pouches on his belt. I assume this is also why there's only a single one of these spalders? Sadly, and like always, the lower legs and boots portion have not been changed. Fortunately for this Warden Soldier's case, he already has enough weight to deal with on the move. Valiant Flak Vest now once again the Colonials have taken the lead with a more forward-thinking offensive solution instead of looking defensively at the past like the Wardens. This flak vest appears to be a very much more compact and movement-friendly item. The shoulder pieces are padded thickly with some sort of dense cloth material while the torso and modular groin attachments certainly are steel plates pocketed and carried inside the ballistic nylon shrouds. Unlike his warden counterpart, the colonial soldier has no upper arm protection, but no doubt is a lot more mobile as we can see with the mechanical game stats. Like the warden set, this is all worn and held in place with a con style belt and loop system, and the weight of the plates themselves. The in game vest here is inspired by the Second World War RAF design for pilot flak body armour, which the US Army adopted and named the M1 Flyers vest, which saw some use during the later parts of the Second World War. Sadly, aside from the vest, everything else on the soldier model is business as usual, making me wonder why this isn't simply just a thing that can be made and worn in the belt inventory slot. I will be suggesting possible minor improvements in a moment for this outfit set. 
general conclusion. What we have here are certainly two very distinct looking uniforms, tuned to a very specific role, which is many what Siege Camp intends for the concept of uniforms in the very game itself. At this point, while I am certain they are locked in keeping uniforms visually as they are present, I still hold out once more for once the Crunch 1.0 is over that it will take the time to tidy up and add a little bit more unique flair to each one. Now, for the Warden Breastplate, I feel perhaps the metal armour could perhaps be a little bit more darker and a bit more worn looking to indicate either the age or the usage, possibly indicating the recycling of something so limited and specialised just being used over and over again to save money. My other suggestion might not be possible due to model clipping, but a loose gas cape wrapped around the shoulders like in the official fan art that inspired this uniform set would also be greatly appreciated. Maybe like with many other Warden uniforms, the inclusion of ankle boots and puttees as well. I will not stop suggesting this, it is in the concept art, please make it happen someday Siege Camp. As for the Colonial uniform, the vest itself is a perfect recreation of the thing uh, in the game, but this time around, more or less, the uniform is rather sadly plain. I would maybe suggest at least the addition of a modified or entirely new helmet? Either some form of painted platoon or division marking, or even just a camouflage net on a smaller scale of things, while on a bigger scale, I would maybe suggest something more interesting, like the USAAF Mark III flak helmet to complete the theme now, maybe with dust goggles attached onto the brim. In all though, I feel they are a very memorable set of outfits, with an easy to understand function, will get plenty of use on the front line, and will both be feared and adored by either side. Now try to take cover and not overburden yourself too much while fighting with it. Until the next video now, stay safe and take care.